coconut. Hey there, everybody. I'm Dan Davidson. And I'm Bill Smith, and it's time for the news from treknews.net. Spanning the Alpha Quadrant. For all the news on all the Star Trek, yo. It's treknews.net. Online at treknews.net. I noticed you put a little Michael there at the end. I did. I can't help it. I, I, I heard him today when I was listening to Studio 54 on Sirius XM. <laughs> 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 you got me doing it. Welcome, everybody, to the news from treknews.net, the oldest brand new Star Trek news podcast from Trek Geeks, bringing you all the Trek news in 15 minutes or less for the week of April 15th, 2021. Dan, breaking. I breaking. mean, this has happened within the last, I think, 48 hours or so since we decided we were going to do this. It looks like there's there's a major announcement for Creation Entertainment's 55-year mission tour Star Trek convention whew, in Las Ooh. Vegas this wow. coming August. You did Somebody very well. Thank you. Someone who's never done a Trek con before. Or yeah, Vegas. This, this is pretty amazing. Of course, we all are excited about the news that Vegas is all reopening up. So fingers crossed that the convention is still going to go on without a hitch and we'll be there in the desert. But yes, Jerry Taylor, executive producer for TNG and Voyager, is going to be appearing on stage as well as signing autographs after her panel. This is her first ever Vegas appearance. Is it her first convention appearance ever? I don't know if it's her first con, but it is absolutely her first, you know, Vegas appearance, yeah. counting STLV and this new um, non-STLV con. This is this is huge news, especially for folks who are huge fans of of TNG and Voyager. I'm very excited about this. Um, e- even though it's no longer the official um, Star Trek convention, they got some big names that are going to be out here in Vegas for the uh, uh, 55 year mission tour. So well, that, that's good to see because it, yeah. it says that, you know, they're at least still able to get the talent, which everybody was worried about when creation lost the CBS license. Right. The fact that Jerry Taylor, I mean, let's face it. This is the woman who created Catherine Janeway. Mm-hmm. This is the woman who wrote the novel Mosaic, which is about as close to a novel being canon as you can get. Um, you know, she's she's the woman who set the tone. She, she was the showrunner of the first four seasons. Um, you know, this is what a great way to spread the Voyager love by having Jerry Taylor at a con. And I'm, I'm more than excited for this. Yeah, I'm really excited. I mean, I don't, you and I both don't attend a whole bunch of panels when we're in Vegas, because we got so many different things going on, but this is one that I can guarantee you both of us are going to be in that auditorium for. It's like a, it's, it's, you know, Patrick Stewart. It's, it's like Anson Mount type stuff. Having somebody who's never been at Vegas before is going to be a big thing. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Me too. Uh, one more thing to add to the list of things to do in Vegas, and that list is never ending, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again, but don't. Well, well okay. Moving on then. Uh, Dan, the internet was all excited for this latest update from Paramount uh, regarding a new movie, but um, I'm going to believe it when I seize it. Uh, well, keep the faith, my friend. Keep the faith. Of the heart. Uh, Yes, Paramount uh, had a surprise, yet a very guarded announcement recently about the often discussed, yet only rumored next Star Trek film. Uh, Well, according to Deadline, a newly dated Star Trek film is scheduled for a June 9th, 2023 release. That's it. That's all the news about it. No idea if it's Kalinda Vasquez's uh, project announced earlier this year or the 2016 announced Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth Star Trek four version that fell apart with contract negotiations trying to be redone uh, or if it's even the Quentin Tarantino possibly R rated film based on a piece of the action or even Fargo slash Legion writer Noah Hawley's version that he wrote last year. So a lot of questions. And basically, this is big news with literally, literally no news or details about it. Yeah, I have to believe <laughs> it's it's going to be the Kalinda Vasquez version if That's it's going to be hoping. anything. I think those other three projects are dead on arrival. Yeah. The real question is now, is it going to be Kelvin Timeline mm-hmm. or is it going to be something else? Yeah. Um, I have to believe that um, and based on other comments made by Kurtzman about how there, uh, I think it was this week, about how mm-hmm. there was really no line between TV and film anymore. Right. I have to believe that it's going to be something that plays into the prime universe. Um, But who knows? Um, Bad Robot's producing, so all bets are off. 
Yep, absolutely. And uh, so I'm sure details will start coming out at some point. This is still more than two years away. Um, but uh, if it's a solid date, we got another movie, man. And I really didn't think it would ever happen again. Well, if it's if it's only two years away, that means they got to get in front of cameras soon. Soon, yeah. Um, because there were three years in between uh, nine and, and in a darkness, and I think another three or four between in a darkness and beyond. Right. It's just two years is a long time for us people waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many years did we wait for a new series? And look how that turned out. So True. I'm hopeful. I'm Absolutely. Hopeful. Moving on, Dan, I know you've been dying to talk about the latest game that was recently made available on Apple Arcade, the Apple subscription service for games. And I guess you could say, if you'll pardon the the expression, it's the stuff of legends. No, I'm not going to part. That was no, that actually, that was very good. Nicely put, Mr. Funny Man. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this game. I'm going to say it. I love it. Last week, Apple Arcade released Star Trek Legends which puts you in command of your own hand-picked crew to fight missions, join alliances, and go head-to-head in PvP battle. Now, this game is very similar to Disney Heroes, where you build up your own uh, 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 character's health and powers over time as you fight others in different battle scenarios from the Disney universe. But now it's in the Star Trek universe, so I love this type of game. I played Disney Heroes for a long time, and this version is visually unbelievable the animations the character details the locations they all have a very distinct star trek feel to them and i've been loving it uh the game's premise is that you're captain of the uss artemis and have been sucked into the nexus as have all kinds of other star trek familiars and as a result you can gain crew members from all of the star trek timelines and shows i've loved playing i i actually bill have been playing at least an hour every day since i got the game and i have gotten epic characters like data saru culber tomalock and Phlox. and uh, just today i got the gorn so I'm loving the storyline and um, I'm, I keep playing because I just want to see what turns up next. Now be warned. This is an Apple only game and it's only available through Apple arcade, which is four 99 a month after your initial free month of signing up. Um, I get that this kind of gameplay isn't for everyone, but in terms of the visual and the star Trek feels, man, I think it's just awesome. Well, and that's great. I'm glad it's found an audience in you. I know that uh, Mike and Jamie from the Divine Treasury are big fans of the game, too. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. Yeah. I tried it. Bet. I did the Apple Arcade trial. I played it for a night. I was ultimately bored with it um, because it was just the same thing over and over to me. Yes. Um, unlocking some of the characters was cool, but after a while, it was like, eh. It does. It does take, you know, you got to think of say, do I want to give somebody this extra power? Do I want to give that one? Do I want to unlock this third move and stuff like that? So there's some thinking that goes into it. So I can understand that it might not be your thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, uh, we've, we've established on this uh, on yes. Trek Geeks before that uh, I get bored by most mobile games yep. quickly. True. Um, the one that I'm playing with the most frequency right now is actually a bowling game. There you go. Okay. Um, there's also a, um, <laughs> there's a mini golf game, which I, I really love and have played it for about three years. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, it, it takes, I mean, the, the, there's gotta be something there. Um, mm-hmm. but this one where you just essentially wind up in the same battle in different places over and over and over just really was like, oh, okay, that, that's great. That's cool. It's good. I, I got to say, um, I can usually go my whole day without my iPad getting drained. Um, since I've been playing this, I've had to charge it every day. <laughs> good graphics suck a lot of battery juice. <laughs> I suppose that's very true. Yes. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dan, next up, you like the video games. Uh, I like the action figures. And soon we're going to have a bunch of new ones to add to our Star Trek collections. Yeah, I got to say, man, the amount of new Star Trek merchandise recently is crazy. And I mean that obviously in a very good way. Super 7 is releasing a brand new set of reaction figures from Star Trek The Next Generation. Captain Picard, Data, Worf, Guinan, Wesley, and a Borg drone will soon be available for fun-filled adventures in your home or office. And according to the release over at StarTrek.com, this is being touted as the, quote, first wave of new action figures. So I guess that means that we will see more coming out down the road. You can pre-order your first set of TNG action figures over at Super7.com. And I know you love action figures, so this is cool for you. I do. I think I gave you a set of the TOS ones for Christmas one year. They're right over there. Yep. Um, and I didn't get them for myself because I was an idiot. Oh, I didn't um, know 
Yeah, no, I, I bought them for you, and I said, oh, I'll get myself some later. I never did. Ah. Um, the thing that gets me about these figures is they kind of remind me of the original Galoob action figures for Next Gen from 87 um, and their size, because I think there haven't been Trek figures this size since then. Mm-hmm. The Playmates ones were a little bigger and a little more substantial. But um, I, I'm here for this. I'll get that set of stuff. I might even open the package on them, too. Yeah, I got to let them breathe. Got to let them breathe. Got to let them breathe. You got to free them from that plastic and cardboard <laughs> prison. <laughs> I love that. That's a great phrase. I'm going to go with that forever. <laughs> Next up, Dan, kind of related to our first story. One of the Kelvin timeline stars is ready to get his ears back on pretty much no matter where he shows up. Yeah, I can't say I blame him, man. After all, he is awesome in the role. Uh, in a recent interview that took place before Paramount's shadowed announcement of a new Star Trek movie, movie actor Zachary Quinto, who of course plays Spock in the Kelvin timeline, said he was very open to the idea of returning. Quote, honestly, I have no real idea what's going on with Star Trek. We all love each other and we all love that experience. And I'm sure if it comes back around and we're all available, I'm sure we'd be happy to jump back on board. No pun intended. End quote. And also during the interview with Pop Culture, the idea of playing Spock on the TV screen for Paramount Plus actually came up. And Zachary said, quote, it's so hard to say. I consider anything and everything that comes into my experience, and I consider it on an individual basis based on criteria that are specific to that time and those circumstances. It's hard to be theoretical about things. I love that character. I love that world. I think there's a lot of possibilities of storytelling in there, and I'd certainly be open to any conversation, but it depends on the who, what, where, when, and how, and why, and like all those questions that can only be answered in specifics, not necessarily hypothetically, so we'll see, end quote. Don't know what that meant, uh, rambling, (laughs) but uh, what do you think? Is Paramount Plus big enough for Ethan Peck and Zachary Quinto as Spock, buddy? No, it's not. I agree. Thank you. I wanted to get that from you first. <laughs> um, there's one Spock now um, for television. It's Ethan Peck. Right. Um, he was the guy in the Paramount Plus ads mm-hmm. with uh, with Anson Mount. Um, he's the guy who is going to be the face of the character going forward. There might be another Calvin Timeline movie. I, I think that ship has sailed, though, no pun intended. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that Zach Quinto's time as Spock is probably done. As much as I liked his performances and I like him as Spock, I think that um, I think we've seen that day come and gone. Interesting. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, I guess over the course of the next few months, we'll find out exactly what's going on with that movie. And then we'll know if we'll see him or not, I guess. I'm going to say I hope I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly hope I'm wrong because I love Zachary Quinto. But yeah. I just I got a feeling, especially since we have a Spock now. We do. Dan, that brings us to the biggest thing of the week yes. the story that piques our interest the most and and the thing that we think deserves the most conversation and this week that honor goes to the cast and crew of the USS Discovery just awesome news you know uh, while the rest of the world continues to go right down the toilet when it comes to equality and justice and peaceful coexistence our dear friends who create write, direct, and star in Star Trek Discovery, show what it's like to be all-inclusive. The 32nd Annual GLAAD Awards were held last week, and Star Trek Discovery was the winner of its only nomination for Best Drama. The GLAAD Awards, quote, recognize and honor media for their fair, accurate, and inclusive representations of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community and the issues that affect their lives, end quote. And Discovery stars Wilson Cruz, Anthony Rapp, Blue Del Barrio and Ian Alexander appeared virtually from the Discovery sets up in Toronto to accept the award as they filmed the show's upcoming fourth season. Rapp thought that the third season increased the show's LGBTQ representation when he said, quote, we were really, excuse me, we were already really proud of the work we have been doing on Star Trek Discovery in season one and two. But I have to say in season three, our creative team hit it out of the park when they introduced the inclusive beautiful, moving story of our new crew members, Adira and Gray, end quote. Del Baria said that Adira has been a gift from the universe. And Ian Alexander said, through this show, our community is being seen the way we want it to be as our most authentic selves. And in a little sneak piece peek of season four, Bill, Wilson Cruz teased that, quote, season four is going to be the best yet. So keep watching, end quote. <laughs> I have to believe that um, yeah. because I think seasons one, two, and three have delivered uh, more than than we thought possible. 
you know, you and I have looked at every episode on Discovering Trek, and we found that it Discovery is a really great namesake for mm-hmm. the Star Trek franchise. Um, you know, people want to talk about Emmys and people want to talk about um, uh, awards from Hollywood and things along those lines, the Oscars for films and and Golden Globes and SAGs. But I'm going to I'm going to go out there on a limb and say that this award is just as important, if not more important than some of those other honors that Hollywood hands out all the time, because as you and I well know and have have, have advocated for representation matters. Mm -hmm. The fact that Star Trek, you know, which is, has always wanted to be this show that is out in front and, and representing these things is finally that show I think speaks volumes, not only to the franchise, to its fandom, but to the rest of Hollywood and the rest of the world as to how this should be done. It's not about, it's not about wokeness. I'm so sick of hearing that word. Nah, I'm so sick. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sick of of hearing. You know that the, the the aspersions that come from people who just don't want any of this because um, honestly, they shouldn't be watching Star Trek in the first place. Right. Um, this is what Star Trek is about. Absolutely, and it's it's about damn time. It is about time. You know, best special effects or or best acting or those are all great. But you They're said great. this is this is what humanity is. This is what humanity should be. It's about time that this recognition is taking place. And I can think of no better show than Star Trek to finally be recognized for that uh, inclusion and for representing what we all, all the good people in the world wish was true now. So I'm very, very excited and very proud uh, of all the people involved and very proud to be a fan, to be honest, because of this award. 100%. One hundred percent. I'm in, I'm insanely proud that that Star Trek brings this award home as a fan, mm-hmm. because I, I think it says a lot. I, I think it's I think it's that important, especially in this day and age. You know, you mentioned it. You know, when you were telling us about the story about the world continuing to go right down the toilet, especially in areas of equality and justice, and, and acceptance and peaceful coexistence. This says to the world, you know what? We're here. Yeah. You know, this is this is part of who we are as a people. So let's, let's be this, let's accept this and let, let's, let's do it. Let's put it on screen and let's let the world see it. And I think that's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's so, it's so disheartening to see what's going on when you turn on the news every day and and whatever the topic of, of, of social uh, topics is going on. It's just so, it, it just makes me want to pull what hair out I have left in my head. But then we have this and we have a show like this and we have an award show that recognizes this and it just makes you think you know what we can do it we can get we can bring everybody together and live the way that humanity is supposed to live i hope it just continues to grow and grow and i i am so happy for people like wilson anthony blue ian and everybody else but to have these folks be the representation just brings tears to my eyes because it makes me so happy from time to time so absolutely we can have no finer you know, representation of, of this in Star Trek than, than those four actors playing those four characters. Yep. I think it's, it's amazing and wonderful. And I can't wait for season four. And I know you can't either. Oh, I cannot wait. Cause that is discovering Trek time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to do it this week for the news from treknews.net, the week of April 15th, 2021. Of course, remember, you know, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, for all the news on all the Star Trek show, Please visit our great friends at treknews.net. Have a great week, everybody. Live long and prosper. Always good to talk to you folks. Coconut. (laughs) (laughs) Coconut.